Hello everybody and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie. When you have watched my last few SQL Server Quickies, you have already a very good understanding about index structures in SQL Server. In this and the following two SQL Server Quickies, I want to talk more about the various physical join operators that SQL Server supports. As you might know, SQL Server has three different physical join operators that are used inside an execution plan. Nested loop, hash join and merge join. And today I'm talking about the nested loop operator. The nested loop operator is the most easiest one that SQL Server can use. As with every physical join operator, we have two input tables that are joined together. You have an outer table and an inner table. When the query optimizer chooses a nested loop operator in the execution plan, SQL Server iterates over every record of the outer table and for every received record, SQL Server starts a loop over the records of the inner table. When the join predicate matches on both rows of the outer and inner table, the row is handed off to the next operator in our execution plan. Because we are dealing with two interleaved loops, the operator is called nested loop. Because of these two loops, the operator is also not scaling very well. When you have a huge amount of rows in the outer table, you have to run the inner loop for every found record. Therefore, the query optimizer chooses the nested loop operator only in specific scenarios. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I'm describing the nested loop operator in more detail to you. I want to show you now on the flip chart how a nested loop operation is performed in SQL Server. As you can see here, we have two tables, table A, table B. We have some ID values and we want to join both tables together. When we first look on the execution plan, you will see SQL Server is accessing table A. We have table B and SQL Server joins both tables together with a nested loop operator and the nested loop operator emits matching rows to another operator like the select operator. As we have said, nested loop means we are starting a loop on the outer table. In our case, table A, we're starting our loop. We're getting the first record with the ID of three and now SQL Server performs an inner loop on the inner table, table B. So you can see we have to go through the whole table because we are dealing with unsorted data. You can see we have a matching row, ID 3, so that's the result. Then we move to the outer table, we move to the next record, record 4, and again we have to go through the whole inner table, no matching records. We move forward on the outer loop, record value 2, we go through the inner table, you can see we have a matching record and because of the unsorted input we have to scan till the end. The same with the value of 1, 1 matching record, value of 5, 1 matching record and finally value of 2, also 1 matching record. As you can see Nested loop doesn't really scale very well because when you have a huge amount of rows on the outer table, you have to do for every record on the outer table one loop on the inner table. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio and I will show you the behavior of the nested loop operator with a demonstration. In this demo, I'm using the AdventureWorks 2012 database to show how SQL Server uses the nested loop operator in the execution plan. In the first step, I'm running here a very simple select statement that performs a join between the table sales order header and sales order detail. When we run this statement and finally 
look at the execution plan, you can see that the query optimizer has chosen a nested loop operator to join both tables together. The query optimizer has chosen the sales or the header table as the outer table of the join operator because he estimates here only one row, a perfect case for the outer table of the nested loop operator. The inner table of the join is the sales order detail table where SQL Server estimates 24 rows. As you can also see very nicely from this execution plan is the fact that the inner table should be always indexed on the join column because SQL Server is then able to perform a seek operation instead of performing a very expensive scan operation. In our case, the clustered seek, the clustered index seek operator is executed once because we are only returning one qualifying row from the outer table, the table sales or the header in our case. The compute scalar operators are used by SQL Server because the table definition has two computed columns defined. Computed columns must be computed somewhere, in our case, in the execution plan during the query execution itself. In the next step, we execute a query which performs a bookmark lookup in the execution plan. Bookmark lookups can be very dangerous in SQL Server because they can introduce a lot of different side effects like bookmark lookup deadlocks. I have already talked about that specific deadlock in my fifth SQL Server Quickie. Another side effect of bookmark lookups is the fact that they are always performed through the help of a nested loop operator. The outer table is here always an operator which accesses a non-clustered index. In our case, we have here a non-clustered non index seek operation. And the inner table is always the bookmark lookup itself. A key lookup clustered on a clustered table and a row identifier lookup on a heap table. In this specific example, we have to execute the bookmark lookup on the inner table 19 times because the outer table produces through the non-clustered index seek operator 19 rows. The more rows you are returning from the seek on the outer table, the more you have to do the bookmark lookup on the inner table. For that specific reason, SQL Server also implements the so-called dipping point, where SQL Server just discards the suboptimal plan and scans the whole table instead. You can find more information about the dipping point in a blog posting on my web blog. Another problem that I'm seeing very, of, very often during my various SQL Server consulting engagements is the use of table variables in combination with joins. A table variable has no statistics in SQL Server to overcome the problem of necessary recompilations. For that reason, SQL Server always estimates, hard-coded, just one row, when you are accessing the table variable in a query. This means that the table variable is always chosen as the outer table of a nested loop operator when you are performing a join against the table variable with another table. When you have a look on the next example, you can see that I'm defining here a table variable and inserting 20,000 rows. That's a really bad practice because table variables should be only used with just a few records. If you have a larger set of records, like here, use a damp table instead because a damp table gives you accurate statistics. After the insertion of the rows into the table variable, I'm performing a simple join against the table person. This means now that SQL Server estimates for the table variable one row and chooses the nested loop operator for the join itself. And the outer table will be, in our case, the table variable and the inner table will be the person table. But in reality, the table variable returns now 20,000 rows. 
This means the SQL Server has to perform the inner loop of the operator 20,000 times. As you can see, we have a very bad execution plan in front of us because the outer table of the nested loop operator processes a huge amount of rows. You can fix that specific problem by using a damp table instead of a table variable because damp tables always have statistics attached to them. If you are not able to make that change, you can also use the recompile query hint. In that case, SQL Server will recompile the select statement with the join, which means SQL Server knows afterwards how many rows are stored in the table variable and therefore the query optimizer can choose the right physical join operator for you. In our case, the query optimizer will use with the recompile query hint a merge join instead of a nested loop operator. Be aware of that side effect when you are working with table variables and performing joins against other tables. If you are unable to change the code itself, you can also attach a query hint through a plan guide to your specific query. In this SQL Server quickie, you have seen the basic ideas behind the nested loop operator in SQL Server. The nested loop operator is a very simple one because SQL Server is just using two interleaved loops to produce a joint result. The query optimizer will only choose a table with a very few records for the outer table. Therefore, it's also very important that your statistics are up to date so that the query optimizer can choose the right physical join operator in the execution plan. And joining against the table variable can be also a little bit complicated as you have seen in the demonstration because by default the table variable will be always chosen as the outer table for a nested loop operator. Thanks for watching the SQL Server Quickie and the next time I'm talking about the hash join operator in SQL Server. Stay tuned.